The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as the scholar. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, has the one thing I'm going to notice about Americans. Everybody likes to join a club. Boys, they join the YMCA. Girls, they got to the YWCA. And the little animals who's lonely, they join in the ASPCA. <laughs> but they also got a clubs for big animals. If you're a lion, you join the lions. If you're elk, you join the elks. And if you are moose, you join the mooses. <laughs> One club, I'm never even knew is such an animal. Mamma mia, maybe you know what's a kiwani. <laughs> anyway, they got all the kinds of clubs. Rotary, Friars, is a 4-H, and a Brownies, and a Scouts. They even got a club you car can join. That's called the Auto Club. <laughs> But in our neighborhood, we got the best kind of club. Is it called the Boys Club? And we all help out. The reason I'm right to you about this club is because a few days ago, I was I had to leave my antique shop for a few hours. And when I'm coming back, who I'm standing in front of my store, but my countryman Pasquale. And he's a say like he's always a say when he's a see me. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, how come you're standing in front of my store instead of your spaghetti palace? Well, you see, Luigi, a little while ago, the supervisor from the boys' club was coming around and raising the money. Oh, see, see, maybe he's in need of money for food, huh? No, no, no. That's the money for the gymnasium. They need the supplies for the gym. You know how they don't like kids to shoot craps in the street? Well, they got a gymnasium so kids can go and shoot craps in there. <laughs> And so they need the money for supplies? That's all right. They figure if they supply the dice, the kids are sure going to play that. <laughs> Pasquale, is it no good kids should shoot the craps altogether? Well, they got other games, I'm sure. Breaking out of jail, a stick a ball, a holding up at a stage coach. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they got a deck of cards. The kids can play Kanata. <laughs> Anyway, main point is I give the supervisor five dollars. Ah, it's a very nice of you, Pasquale. Sure, we're big people. We gotta help them kids out. Like I'm always a said, Luigi, you gotta watch your kids all the time. How you plant the seed, that's how the sap grows. <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. Is there nobody bigger sap than you? <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm a say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> well, anyway, Luigi, I was a happy to give the man five dollars because that's very important to our community. After all, the killer today is the man of tomorrow. Only you could think of things like that, Pasquale. I only wish I was there. I would have given the supervisor my little contribution, too. <laughs> that's all right, Luigi. Don't worry yourself. I pledge the money for you. Huh? How much? Well, Luigi, you know the whole neighborhood knows how much you love kids. You must love them at least ten times more than I do. Well, I'm, I'm going to like to brag. That's but... all right, Luigi. Anyway, I figure you like them ten times more than I do. I give her $5, so I said you was going to give her $50. <laughs> $50? Pasquale, that's a bad of you. You know I ain't got a fifty dollars. How could you do such a thing to me? Well, Luigi, I meant well. I was gonna give you the money. 
I'll give you all the money you want. If only I could hear you say those three little words. I love you. All right. Pasquale, I love you. Yeah, not to me. <laughs> Fresh guy. <laughs> look, Luigi. Don't look on it like you're doing something for Rosa. Do it as a favor for me. For you? Yes. I want to be a grandfather. <laughs> and I can't become one unless you first to become a father. But, Pasquale, I don't want to become a father. Who's asking you? You're a traitor to your country. That's what you are. Traitor? Sure. If everybody was to go around saying he don't want to become a father, you know what would have happened to this country? It would be no fathers a day. Instead, we have two mothers a day. <laughs> that would be a terrible catastrophe. Pasquale, I would really like to help you out, but not with the Russia. Next time, ask me for a smaller favor. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going into my store and call up at the boys' club. And I tell him I'm going to give him whatever I'm going to afford. Hmm, it's a telephone. I wonder who's it going to be. Hello, is it Luigi Basco is it talking? Hello, Mr. Basco. This is Mr. Dunlevy at the Boys Club. We just heard about your wonderful contribution. But that was... I suppose you know it's the largest contribution in the neighborhood. We've already ordered some wonderful equipment on the basis of your pledge. You already ordered... Yes, and what's more, inasmuch as all the boys know you, we'd like you to make a little speech on courage and athletics Friday night when we open the gym with the new equipment. But I'm a no... Oh, don't let the speech worry you. The boys will love any remarks you make on the subject. Thanks again, and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm going to go to my night school class and ask her for help. That's all right, Jules. Don't worry about a thing. All right, class. Quiet, please. Please. Now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwick? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Super fail. Here and pause it. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, this is the first time since I began calling the roll that you've answered in Viennese. That's because I wanted to be a Vienna roll. <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. And smile, everybody. Luigi, you are not smiling. What's the reason? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? I ain't got it. Ain't? Mr. Basco, I haven't got fifty dollars. Oh, you too? Then we both are having to get the fifty dollars. <laughs> Luigi, what are you talking about? Well, you see, I'm supposed to give fifty dollars to buy the equipment for the boys at gymnasium. Uh, fifty dollars? Himmel, what are they doing for those little kiddies? Making the brass knuckles out of gold? <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, in order for you to give fifty dollars, you must have a job that pays gigantic wages. Fifty dollars? That's a lot of money, even if you got it. Class, why don't you let Mr. Basco finish what he was saying? Thank you, Miss Spalding. You see, the boys' the club was collecting the money for the gymnasium, and I wasn't in my store, so Pasquale told them I would have given him a fifty dollars. Oh, that steaming Pasquale! When I hear his name, my blood boils so you can see steam coming out of my nose. <laughs> but why? Why should he do a thing like that? Yeah, what, what? What is his reason? Why you have to ask? He has got the biggest reason anybody ever had. Rosa, <laughs> Miss Pasquale, you just got to put two and two together, and it always comes out 250 pounds. <laughs> yes, but Mr. Schultz, giving $50 to the boys' gymnasium isn't helping Mr. Pasquale any. Only thing is, Miss Pauling, Pasquale said to me, if I'm a married Rosa, he'll give me the money so the boys can have a gym supplies. Sure. What does he care if he has to buy a dozen barbells if he only gets rid of one dumbbell? <laughs> now, Luigi, you got it. No problem. Just call up the club and say, hello, about the money, I ain't got it. It's impossible, Schultz. They already bought his stuff and they asked me to make a speech this Friday night to the boys. Schultz, maybe you know where I'm going to get the $50? No. Olsen, maybe you know where I'm going to get the $50? No. How do I say? Maybe you know what I'm going to get a $50? No. 
Miss Spalding, I hope you're not counting these answers on our final report cards. <laughs> well, class, it looks as though Mr. Basco has a real problem. Now, has anyone any practical suggestions? I got it, Luigi. If you really want $50 quick, go right home. Yes, sir. Put on your bathrobe and slipper. Yes, sir. Sit down by the radio. Then what, the Schultz? Sir. When the telephone rings, don't say hello. Just say Abraham Lincoln and hang up. <laughs> Believe me, in one hour, they'll send you a refrigerator and $10,000. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, I'd like to suggest an easy, inexpensive way to make your daily work more pleasant. Keep some Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. It's a treat you can enjoy almost any time, even when going at a fast clip. You'll find that lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor refreshing. And the good, smooth chewing will give you a feeling of satisfaction while you work. It'll help break the monotony, make the job seem a bit easier. Get a few packages of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum when you go out tomorrow morning. You'll enjoy it. You really will. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm going to try all over to get the $50 for the boys at gymnasium. But I'm going to no luck. I am even thought the best idea was to go to a finance company. Outside there was a sign, we give it $25 for your signature. This will look wonderful. I thought I would have signed it twice and I get a fifth of dollars. <laughs> so I went in the side. Then they asked me if I'm going to get a bank account, if I'm going to have a good job, if I'm going to have a car, if I'm going to have a house. Mamma mia, if I was to have all those things, they would ask me if I could have loaned them money. <laughs> but anyway, I was sitting in my antique shop thinking how I would have to make a bigger shame for myself when I go to the boys' club with no money. One of my daughters opened up, and then she comes Sandy, the news boy. Hello, Mr. Basco. I brought you the evening paper. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Here's your nickel. Boy, Mr. Basco, we kids sure are proud of you. I bet that 50 bucks is all you got. Yeah, it's all I'm a got, and it's all I'm a ain't a got. <laughs> Sandy, how you find out I'm a giving her money? Oh, I got it from the grapevine. Grapevine? Sandy, you're too young to be drinking. <laughs> oh, that's just slang, Mr. Basco. Uh, Sandy, what would you boys think if I'm a donor give it at $50? Huh? <laughs> That's what Mr. Pasquale tried to tell us. He wanted to bet you wouldn't come through with the money. I told him maybe he wouldn't, but we could always depend on you for the do re me. Oh, no, maybe I, I get to the money and make a speech, but I'm not going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not expecting you to, but I know that comes Friday, Pasquale will be wrong, and we'll be cheering you. Aha, uh -huh, Mr. Basco, if you make a promise, you deliver. Aha, uh -huh, Sandy, I'm a deliver. <laughs> so long. Mama man, I'm going to get the money. I'm a can't to disappoint those boys. Maybe I'm going to go to the bank. Luigi, my fellow boobie. Oh, hello, Schultz. Ach, Luigi, from the look in your voice, I can tell that you didn't have much luck raising the money. So even if it ain't much, I brought something to help you out. <laughs> Here, ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sure, so where do you got it? It's my mad money. <laughs> and when my wife finds out I got it, ooh, she's going to be mad. <laughs> Go ahead, Luigi, take it. No, no, sure, I couldn't. Oh, go ahead, take it. No, no, thank you. Well, we go around once more. <laughs> no, sure, I'm going to take it. All right, go ahead, take your finance business somewhere else. Go to the Morris plan. See if Morris brings you the money to the house like Schultz does. <laughs> I should see you crazy. Well, all right, I'm going to buy the $10. Oh, Himmel, you've got to sweat blood to lend you money. <laughs> well, now, Luigi, cheer up. At least you got it to start. Now, all you have to do... Himmel, what was that? It sounds like a parade. Come on outside, Luigi. <laughs> Sure, so what is it, the circus? No, Luigi, it's a carnival. It comes every year by the lake shore. Oh, what fun. You know, they got all kinds of rides and free. Oh, yeah, we got the same thing in Italy. Oh, well, they got one fella, he can touch his tongue with his nose. <laughs> he can touch his feet with his nose. He can even touch his elbow with his nose. Hey, Schultz, is it this is the India rubber man? No, but he sure got a long nose. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a lot of fun at the carnival, huh, Schultz? Oh, yeah, you know, I bring my kids there every year. They got a the fighter there, the killer. 
killer and they got a standing offer to anybody in the crowd. If anybody can stay in the ring with the killer, he gets $20 a round. Ain't they taking the chances to give away so much money? No, Luigi. You see, they got the iodine concession. <laughs> well, I gotta go now, Luigi. I hope you get the rest of the money. Yeah, I'm a hope so too, and a thank you, sure. <laughs> Goodbye, Luigi. And smile. Be like me. Always happy, huh? Always laughing. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> hmm, $20 a round. Mamma mia, that's for me. If I must stay two rounds, there's my $40. I'm going to do it. I'm a strong. Even when I was a boy, when Uncle Pietro Zagotti used to kick me, I used to kick him right the back. Oh, please, please, Mr. Closet the door. The noises are giving me a headache. Oh, sensitive type. Well, I hope you brought your own aspirin. Well, thank you. Two rounds of $40. Luigi, you got to stand up for two rounds. Well, kid, in a few minutes, you're going to meet the killer. Did you bring your trunks? What? Where are your trunks? Why, am I going on a trip? <laughs> Here, put these on. I'll lend you a pair. But I'm already wearing the pants. Well, you got to wear these. If I wear those, it's going to be a draft. That's not all there's going to be. Come on, slip them on, stupid. All right. You sure must need that dough awful bad. Awful bad? Yeah. How much do you weigh? Uh, 136. Stripped? Huh? I said stripped. What's the matter with you? When I wear myself in a candy store, you think I'm going to take my clothes off? <laughs> oh, brother. Well, these are your trunks. Come here, I'll slip on the gloves. Gloves? Oh, good. You like that, huh? Well, sure. If my knees are going to be cold, at least my hands are going to be warm. <laughs> watch out, watch out. Coming through with the stretcher. Here comes victim number three. Mamma mia. At the man on the stretcher, what's happened to him? Nothing, nothing. He just took one too many in the bread basket. You mean he's a stealer from the bakery? <laughs> and they wonder where the good fighters are coming from. Come on with me, dopey. Louis, thank goodness we got here in time. The candy store man told us you were coming down here, Louis. Yeah, I, I told you about the killer, but I didn't think you were stupid enough to want to get killed. <laughs> Come on, Luigi, jump into your clothes. We are taking you home. Your friends, yeah. don't, don't worry about me. I'm a strong. Uh, strong, he says. Luigi, didn't you see the killer warming up for the audience? He bit a telephone pole in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Luigi, this killer is the real reason Joe Lewis could fight me. Come on, take off those gloves, please. Oh, no, that's, that's against the rules. I'm going to wear these gloves and these trunks, and if I'm going to stay two rounds with a killer without a stealing a bread, I'm going to collect the $40. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmel? You sound like you already went ten rounds with the killer. All right, Basco, you're next. No, 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 you ain't taking him. He ain't a citizen, and if you kill him, tomorrow America has got at war with Italy. <laughs> Please, please, Schultz. I'm a promise the boys a club of fifty dollars, and I'm a gonna deliver. He is going to deliver. All of a sudden, he's talking like a milkman. <laughs> well, what's the use? Come on, fellas. We'll stay with Luigi in his corner and pick up the pieces. <laughs> That's a, such a funny people. They never even saw me, and already they hate me. Ladies and gentlemen, now for his both the poet from Chicago's own North Holstead Street, the killer takes on Luigi Vasco. <laughs> hey, Horowitz. What? Horowitz, why are they all saying a boo? They're trying to scare me? Luigi, that's human nature. When men gather in a crowd, they like to see blood. Especially if it's not their own. <laughs> Go home, Luigi, so they wouldn't see yours. Okay, boss. Go come to the center of the ring. All right, I'm coming. All right, two of you get together. Hello, Mr. Killer. It's a nice weather, huh? 
Shut up. <laughs> okay, Basco. Now I'll give you some brief instructions. Oh, thank you. You're going to teach me how to fight, huh? Shut up. <laughs> now listen, Basco, I want no fouls, no holding, no elbow, no button, no open gloves, and a kiss, and everything strictly according to Marcus of Queensbury rules. Huh? And one thing make sure of. No rabbit punches. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to never punch the rabbit in my life. <laughs> All right, now, before you come out, fight and shake hands. Oh, it's nice. I'm a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Keller. Shake me, shake. <laughs> okay, back in your corner and come out fighting. Ring the bell, Joe. Now, don't forget, Luigi, keep away from him. Like this, the shirt. Oh, don't look at me. No. <laughs> Please, please, mister. What's the matter? And instead of practicing the arithmetic, why don't you help me to get up? <laughs> no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Never mind, never mind. I'm, I must stand up by myself. Good, good for you, Luigi. The killer looks worried. Yeah, yeah, he's wondering why that punch didn't kill Luigi. <laughs> Mamma mia. Every time I'm a stand up, the floor is a come up to meet me again. Four, five, six, seven. He's up. How do you feel, Basco? I would have feel fine if the killer would have stopped hitting me. Look out, Luigi. Hey, <laughs> he's a mister me. Oh, he's a no mister me. Luigi made twenty dollars. No, wait, I go out and drag him in. Oh, that crazy little Wiener schnitzel. <laughs> Come on, Luigi. Ha. Oh, hello, oh, 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 what, what am I doing to fight any of you? <laughs> Never mind. Come into your corner. Luigi, after tonight, you don't ever have to worry about the hydrogen bomb. <laughs> oh, Luigi, what you look like. It shouldn't happen to a dog. It couldn't. The dog would have gone home by now. <laughs> mama, mama, mama mia. I'm going to make $20 in, a, in a three minutes. Soon I'm going to make enough for, for the boys' club. Soon you're going to make enough for a tombstone. <laughs> Luigi, listen to me. Him, there goes the bell. Don't know what it should say. Shut up! Oh, I'm a fella. Ooh. Luigi, should I throw in the towel? Ooh. Oh, t- Should I throw in the towel? I'll t- I'll t- turn if you want to, but, but I don't think I'm got enough time to wipe myself. Ooh. <laughs> ah. Ah. One, two, three. Ooh. One, two, three. Ooh. One, two, three. Ooh. Hey, hey, lay down, Luigi. Sounds like you're doing a conga in your sleep. Huh? Huh? Hey, Pasquale, what am I doing in my bed? Olsen brought you home. You couldn't afford a hospital. What a stupid greenhorn booby you are. Look at you. Some sight. My little cabbage head has got a cauliflower ears. Hey, Pasquale. Pasquale. How much, how much money am, am I made it tonight? Twenty dollars. Only twenty? They tell me you was a bouncer for two rounds. <laughs> In the second round, they had to stop it. The crowd was getting seasick watching you go up and down. <laughs> Only twenty dollars. I'm a didn't get the money, and I'm, I'm a didn't even make the crowd happy. What do you mean, make the crowd happy? There was a... I was a hollering and a kill him, a kill him. And I didn't even get the killed. <laughs> well, Luigi, you just can't please anybody. You're right, the first party. I'm no good for anybody. Well, Luigi, you're still a good for somebody. <laughs> Why don't you listen to me? Stop a fight in the life and a marry Rosa. 
Then I could have just rest and stay out of everybody's way. Pasquale, I'm a thinker, you're right. <laughs> Luigi, you're never going to regret it. I call in a Rosa right now. Rosa! 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 Yes, my little flyweight. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, this is a very happy day for you. Luigi's going to give you his name. Oh, goody. Now everybody's going to call me Luigi Basco. <laughs> hello. Hello, it's... Uh... Schultz. Hey, Horowitz, what do you got your head all bandaged up for? Horowitz, he was a head accident. Here, Luigi, here's the other $20. <laughs> no, no, Horowitz, you didn't. He did. The last fighter to go with the killer. He stayed there for three minutes, and then he laid there for another 30. <laughs> Schultz was hiding under the ring. Every time I got knocked down, he stuck a pin in me. <laughs> Did I get up? <laughs> here, here, take the 20. What up, Pasquale? Now I'm got the money, everything is all right. Looks like I'm going to make the speech after all. What? Listen to you, Papa Squeak. Even if you got $50, what do you think those kids are going to say about the way you got beat up? Courage and athletics. <laughs> You should have talked on the ten easy ways to commit a suicide. <laughs> you just said that because you're angry, Pasquale. No, Luigi, don't say that. I got more news for you. The boys' club decided that you are not going to give the speech. What? Yeah, Pasquale is going to do it. <laughs> what do you know? Now maybe you take a few lessons from me, eh? Class is always a good to tell. They, they couldn't do that. They did, Luigi. Yeah, especially when we told them how Pasquale said he was giving it $200 for the gymnasium. Yeah, $200? <laughs> Schultz, are you joke? Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Class will tell. <laughs> Luigi. Ooh, Luigi, what's the matter? My, my rheumatism is a killing me. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, everything is a turn out wonderful. The gymnasium was open, and Amma made the speech. Pasquale didn't give any money. Schultz and Horowitz was just a plain joke. But Pasquale got so sick over it, everybody was happy. He's the star of everything, and it's all coming back to him. He's like Uncle Pietro always used to say. He's an ill wind that gives the people the pneumonia. <laughs> Well, a good night, Mamma Mia. Take a good care of yourself. Keep healthy. I'm going to learn an important thing this week. Good thing in life is not only courage in athletics, but it's a courage in life. You're loving a son, Luigi Vasco, the immigrant. <laughs> Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint is just about the perfect taste treat to enjoy between your meals. During the morning or afternoon, when you get a little hankering for something tasty, slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum into your mouth. Chew on it and get the full enjoyment of that refreshing, delicious, real mint flavor. You'll enjoy the chewing itself, too. That little stick of gum will satisfy you without spoiling your appetite for lunch or supper. Try it, won't you? Keep some Wrigley Spearmint Gum handy to enjoy between your meals. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Dermott. J. Carol Marsh has starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Rivas Pasquale. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>